everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Nonprofit Show. We are so excited because today we are in New Orleans at the AFP Icon 2023 conference. And what's really exciting is that we are in the Bloomerang's booth. They are so generous. They are having us in their booth um, for the second time as we bring in um, all of the different people that we get to meet and to know at AFP Icon. So thank you to our friends at Bloomerang. I have to get my fingers right um, for letting us be in their booth. Um, if any of you have ever done a, um, a conference, you know that real estate in a show floor is a prime. And so thank you, thank you, thank you to Bloomerang. I have to get my fingers right, Jarrett. Um, anyway, thank you, thank you. Hey, before we get going, let us do um, a quick introduction. I'm Julia Patrick. She's Jarrett Ransom, the nonprofit nerd. Thank you so much for bringing us back. We also want to thank all of our partners and sponsors. They include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Your Part-Time Controller, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the people who allow us to come in to you and to visit with you every day. We're now in our fourth year of broadcasting. So thank you to our sponsors. If you want to find us, you can find us on our streaming platforms, podcast, and now on our new app, which is super cool. Um, you can take a, a quick picture of this uh, bar of the scan and you will connect with us on an app. So thank you to our team that worked so hard to get that done. Hey, Jarrett Ransom, woohoo! Go, sister. Thank you, Julia. And yes, thank you, Bloomerang, because they are so extremely generous. Prime Real Estate here at AFP Conference uh, 2023 here in Nolens, as we had to, to share with uh, Julia yesterday, right? Uh, so, Anne, we are thrilled to have you here representing Bloomerang yesterday. For those of you who watch live or the recording on all of the, the platforms that Julia just shared, we had Josh on. And so, Anne, I would love to hear from you, you know, really about the conference. What are you seeing? Uh, what is Bloomerang seeing and hearing? You have an amazing team here. Tell us a little bit about what's percolating. Well, it's interesting. You know, one of the things that we're seeing, and I've had a lot of conversations, I just had a really in-depth conversation with someone, the concept of the culture of philanthropy and what are we doing in our organizations to make sure that not just our fundraising team, but our leadership, our board, but our staff as well, um, there's work to be done. We did a study and uh, there's a real opportunity to start to inject the core values of it is all of our responsibilities to be able to make a case for support and to fund. Do I understand my role in the part of fundraising? And so culture of philanthropy, I think we've got a real opportunity there. You know, I love hearing that. I also echo that. I've heard it, um, you know, with clients that I work with and I would say, What's percolating for me, not just here at the conference, but you know, around town, if you will, are so many CEOs coming to say, I need help with my board. I need help with my leadership team. I need help with my you know, teams to say, how do we all collectively build this culture of philanthropy? So that's important. And I, I am you know, loving that that is still happening and, and we're talking about it because we need to talk about it. Um, you mentioned a study and I know that's something, yeah, let's, let's pull oh, this up. Hold it up. Yeah, we, 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 a, a while back, we talked yes. about a, a few of the little like per, sneak preview. Yeah. Well, we've published the study and that's where within this study, there are six core themes that emerge when it comes to the fundraisers outlook for 2023. So we surveyed over a thousand small and mid-sized nonprofits. How did they feel about their goals? Can they meet their goals? Can they exceed their goals? And then what do they need, right? And so there are, there, there are some major themes in here, but the culture of philanthropy really stands out because 
two of the six themes are around my leadership support. My leaders know how to fundraise. They help with fundraising. They feel they understand they have a role in fundraising as well as board support and engagement. We've talked about board in the past, but it's still, it's a heavy theme. There are a lot of heads nodding this week about how do I gracefully ask the board to engage, or maybe it's time to maybe change it up a little bit on the board. So where do we get our hands on this study? Well, you can go to bloomerang.com and go ahead and download it. I'm going to like uh, flip to a QR code. Oh, good. Perfect. Um, So there is a, there is a QR. There is a QR code. So actually in the AFP deck, what we'll do is we'll get you a link. um, And so that you're, you know, you can go ahead and share it with whomever you want to, but just go ahead and go to bloomerang.com and you can find the study. We have all kinds of resources and articles and things available where you can get to this. So, you know, I feel like that's a topic, honestly, and about the board engagement, the leadership team, it's not new, right? So how do we remove those barriers? Is that what the report, is there recommendations in there? Well, there are recommendations. We actually talked about that in our session. So we had the opportunity to do an education session with a panel of experts to say, you know what, you may need to bring in the outside consultant. And, and uh, we had a couple of consultants that said, hey, you know what, if you bring me in, I can be the bad yes. person and share the hard news to say, you know what, it's time to engage. So there are about 20% of boards were not um, giving a gift at all. And it's not about how much our boards give, but it's the, it's the psychological concept of a board, of a board member giving what they can give, whatever that may be. It can be any size. It doesn't matter. It's the, the idea that everybody on my board gives. That 100% participation. Yep. That's important. You know, and I hear often from boards, well, we give of our time. Okay. And we also need to say we have 100% you know, perhaps time, talent, and treasure, which are the three T's that we we talk a lot about. Um, I'm curious also, Anne, you know, the report, beyond that report, what is new and what's coming maybe for Bloomerang that you can share? Well, one of the newer things is, again, let's talk time, talent, and treasure for a minute, if I think I... Um, so one of the things, so Boomerang has been really strong in donor relationship building, donor cultivation. How do we retain donors? How do we get them coming back? Sometimes we give not only with dollars, but we give with time. And so Boomerang made an acquisition earlier this year in the volunteer management space. And so the idea of bringing you know, donors and volunteers together in one system and being able to effectively, how do I build relationships with people? That's right. We're in the relationship business. And so we feel that it's important to expand that, you know, those relationship components. So that's one of the really big, exciting, uh, you know, big needle mover when it comes to some of the things that we're working on at Yeah, that's a big splash. (laughs) It is huge. Yeah. And Julia, you know, just looking at your face here for that, I'm so fortunate because I I do have quite a few clients actually on the Bloomerang CRM system. And when you log in, you get the notification of the acquisition of the new platform and what that looks like. So, you know, for uh, organizations, as we look at donors, it is that time, talent, and treasure, but it's also how do we move the needle from, you know, people giving up their time and of their money? How do we get people give of their money and of their time? Well, and that's, I mean, that, that, that the key thing here is we want engagement and it can be all types of engagement. And when we can create, cultivate a valuable relationship over time that does open up the door for major gifts, other things, we can get involved in many, many different ways. And so we have a lot of customers right now are in it, uh, entering into an early access program where they're raising their hand. They're, I'm excited to um, start to utilize the volunteer management software yeah. and bring bringing that all together because I realize all these interactions, all these touch points along the journey is going to be really powerful for our organization. Yeah. And Julia, you remember one of the things we talked about um, over the last three years, of course, is the, you know, the volunteer support and how many organizations we talk about 1.8 million registered in the U.S. rely on a heavy support of volunteers. And so having this platform, those layers of engagement, I think is just so important and will really strengthen those relationships. So how has it been? I mean, what is it? A week, two weeks since it's gone live? Uh, been a, a couple of weeks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of weeks, maybe three, four, uh, three, four weeks where we've been really, really active. 
in terms of uh, turning customers on with the software. So, but the the company that the Bloomerang acquired is called Init Live. Um, we're gonna, you know, it's really really exciting. But what I want to just highlight is that in this kind of environment that we're in, there is a big concern. So it, the data on the report says, I'm really worried about my aging donor population, yeah. right? Yeah. And then the other theme, and it's it's louder than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. The other piece is related to how do I bring in the new crop of donors, yes. right? And volunteer is a beautiful way to do that. And that's where let's start to engage with um, younger generations that may not have as much at their disposal to give, but c connecting getting them passionate about the mission right. and bringing them in. It's going to be a really important piece as we look at it from a fundraising perspective of how do I engage holistically with the community that's out there that cares about what we do. Yeah. I'm smiling ear to ear because truly I got into the sector through volunteer engagement, you know, through being a volunteer as a, as a young child. Um, I really, you know, give that to my mom because she had us very civically involved. We didn't necessarily have the financial means, but we had the time and we also had the desire, right. To connect with our community. So that's, that's certainly a big one. So before we let you go, Anne, uh, Josh shared and teased our nugget for where the conference will be next year. And I know uh, Bloomerang will be there. I know. Drum roll, Julia. So um, go ahead. Tell us, tell us what that looks like for next year. Two words. Oh, Canada. <laughs> wow. So it's going to be in Toronto yeah. next year. So yeah. really exciting little international travel for, for many of us. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Toronto is an absolutely wonderful city to go to. So I highly encourage if you've never been to an AFP icon, make yeah. next year your, your year. Yeah, I agree. Make next year your year. Um, if you have a passport that might be you know, uh, ending soon, looking at that deadline, get it renewed. Definitely pay attention to your expiration on your passports. Uh, Mike Geiger was over here earlier this morning, was sharing that actually the AFP icon communications will start really sharing that communication about your passports and the requirements for travel. So I love that. Two words. Oh, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> and thank it. you. It has been fantastic. And again, thank you for all that you do uh, here, you know, in the sector and everywhere. So I appreciate you being here. Well, thank you. It's just, it's a real pleasure to support the sector. We, we appreciate the opportunity. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks, so before man. we uh, bring on our next guest, I'm really excited to share uh, that one of our previous guests, Julia, that we've had on Cindy Wagman, who is from Toronto and happened to be the one sharing that what she wants to do next year is to have uh, like a debrief day. And so I'm really excited for that. But she shared with me this book. And there is, of course, um, you know, a book nook, if you will, an AFP uh, book nook. And this is one of those. And it's talking about collecting courage, joy, pain, freedom, and love. And so it really is about people of color in the fundraising practice. And so I wanted to share this and highlight this book. There's also so very, so very many, um, you know, to look at uh, the book nook is always fun. John Lepp, right? We've had him on John Lepp. He's here with his book. Um, he's got a fan. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, booth and everything looks great. But so next up, I want to invite fundraising Academy at national university. So I'm going to bring both Pearl in and faith. So here come these ladies. Hello. Hi, Julia. Hey, Hi, you? Julia. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, so we're really excited to have them as you can tell, right? Like so many familiar faces, friendly faces as well. And it's just been fantastic. So, uh, Jack Alotto, we saw him as well. LaShonda. So really glad to have both Pearl and Faith with us today. But I'd love to ask both of you. Um, you've been attending sessions, is that right? And you've also been presenting on some sessions. Yes. So tell us about what you presented on. Do you want to start? Yeah, sure. So we had two sessions and one was on digital fundraising and the other one was on fundraising action planning. So yeah, LaShonda and Jack did an incredible job. We were really grateful to be here and be a part of Icon. I love that. And I got to sit with them uh, yesterday at lunch and hear about the session, the questions from the session, the engagement and interaction. So it, it's been really cool to hear. What about you, Pearl? It was so much fun. It's, it's always at ICON wonderful to see our trainers just shine. 
And especially to see, like you said, the really great questions and the learning, the shared learning, because you can have a great presentation and then that discussion that happens after where peers are sharing with each other. So it was just wonderful to see the inspiration. We got to see Misty Copeland. It was a really wonderful experience here at Icon. Misty was not at our session, though I would have loved that. (laughs) Just to clarify, she was the opening for Icon. Yeah, yeah, she was the opening and uh, the closing actually is Emerald, right? Uh, Famous chef. And all I can think of when I hear Emerald is bam, (laughs) right on cue, Julia. Yeah, well, tell us a little bit uh, more about what you're seeing hearing here on the conference floor. I always love, and what I shared last year, Julia, was, you know, this is a tech forward conference with a fundraising focus. And I love seeing the tech. I love seeing the adoption of the tech, uh, the adaptation, AI, of course, um, artificial intelligence. In fact, we went and spoke with a booth yesterday about AI. But what else are you ladies seeing and hearing as I asked Anne from Bloomerang, like what's percolating? completely agree with you that the AI and the tech and seeing it become more um, feasible and doable for fundraisers. I think just even a few years ago, we would talk about tech as this futuristic thing that if you don't have an expert, you can't implement it. But what I'm seeing when talking to all the vendors first, a lot of collaboration between the different vendors and really to support fundraisers at a holistic level. But the fact that they make AI usable and easy with a click of a button so that we can actually leverage these tools to increase revenue, connect with our donors in a way that's authentic while utilizing AI to scale our impact. So just inspiring. Yeah, you know, you sound a lot like Josh yesterday, which I love because it really, it does, it reiterates the fact that tech is becoming, and advanced tech is becoming more accessible, more accessible, more palatable, more, a little bit more comprehensible, I think, you know, for the smaller organizations. And as we know, again, 1.8 million nonprofits registered in the U.S., the majority of them are smaller organizations. So absolutely. And the fact, like you said, that it's accessible to those smaller nonprofits allows them to stay in the game. Yeah. and support their causes, even if they don't have multiple, you know, right. multiple people on staff, that huge budget. So it's very inspiring. Yeah, it's really inspiring. Faith, I'm going to put you on the spot here. I'm curious, is this your first AFP icon? It is. It really is. It's been so exciting. <laughs> yeah. Tell us what that's like for you, because I know there's 3,700 people here actually as, as uh, attendees. And so you're one of the newbies, which I love. So what does it look like from a first timer's lens? It's been an overwhelming, but powerful experience. It's been amazing to meet so many new people and see the great work that's being done all around the globe here. And just the amazing topics that are available for each session I, you know, people can't, you can't even um, just focus on one session. Sometimes some people are walking away and going to a different session halfway through to make sure that they can enjoy everything that's available. Um, but yeah, I've met some incredible folks and, and, and learned a lot. So I'm, yeah, very excited. Yeah, I'm grateful. Yeah, I love hearing that because there, it's so much going on here. As we said, you know, there really is 3,700 people, tons of sessions. Like if we could clone ourselves and be at all of them, I think we would. You know, there's just so many choices, so many great choices. Yeah. What about you? Because this is not your first conference, right? It's not. My first conference actually was five years ago here in New Orleans. Ooh, so it's kind of coming back full circle. My first icon. Um, yes, I have to say the number of sessions to choose from it, someone who has trouble making decisions <laughs> it has been very <laughs> challenging but it, it is very cool the, the culture this year is that you leave halfway and you go to another session and still get that value so that speaks to the impact of the presenters able to hold someone's attention even if they come halfway through um, and by the way they've recorded everything so what's nice is you don't have to be Hermione and have a time turner. You can actually go back and watch the recordings of the sessions you missed. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is fantastic. And what I love too, Julia, as you heard, the Fundraising Academy, you know, many of them presented uh, yesterday. Uh, multiple sessions? Did you have multiple? We had two sessions. We also sponsored the Emerging Leader Reception. We had probably 200 um, emerging leaders come, most of them excited to see Jack Alato, their CFRE <laughs> trainer. But yeah, just one thing I've noticed this year, and I also noticed last year, was people are grateful to be back together in person. Um, and it feels it feels safe. People are really respectful of each other, but there's just this 
feeling of joy mm. to be back together and to remember that we have this huge community around the globe of people who are going through similar things yeah. that we're going through. That's a great point. And, you know, also the connections from here, because I feel like I'm still riding on high from last year's conference, you know, and here we are again at a second year, we get to double dip. And, and I just feel like, you know, the wave just gets bigger and bigger. And it's really cool to see because you're right. Last year, we were also glad to be back in person. We were mass. So there was, you know, some, some barriers for that. Uh, but then also looking at this year, you know, it is, it is hugs galore. It, it is, is you know, how, how close can we get because we've, you know, seen each other here in the box. So it's been a lot of fun and I have to ask, will the two of you be going to Toronto? We better be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I would love to. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Very excited well, for Toronto. Yeah. Very excited for Toronto. And before we leave, I also want to share um, or ask you to share, one of you to share, what's happening in June? I know you knew that was coming, right? Because there's something else exciting. Yes, very exciting. We have a full day fundraising conference on June 1st. The wonderful Jarrett will be coming to speak. Bloomerang will be coming to speak as well and some incredible speakers from around the country. What we're doing is we're bringing folks together, emerging leaders and executive nonprofit leaders to really think about how can your fundraisers have impact and really bring in those amazing donors to their cause. And then as leaders, how can you create those safe, inclusive, inclusive spaces that allow your fundraisers to thrive? So very excited. Full day, $99. But if you use the code community, you can register at $79. Full day conference in San Diego. Can't wait to see you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for that. So Bloomerang will be there as well. It'll be another reunion. So that's going to be fun. Um, Faith, you've got a big piece in this Cultivate Conference as well. And I'm really excited to hear about that. So what are some of the things that you're doing to support the success of this inaugural conference? Yes. <laughs> well, I'm just happy to coordinate, you know, the logistics for our event, you know, help support our presenters and setting up our lineup. Um, Pearl wants me to introduce some of our emerging leaders, <laughs> so it should be very exciting. Um, so yeah. yeah, it'll be great. Are you pulling some ideas? Are there certain things that you're both, both of you are seeing here saying, Ooh, this, this is something that we need to replicate at Cultivate. Oh, absolutely. And by the way, Faith is doing a lot more than yes. that. She oh, I, I know. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> just wanted to share that Faith is the glue for this conference, but yes, just seeing how the connection that has been facilitated here so easily, we want to be sure that we do the same thing so that people come learning is important, but the connections that you create our lasting impact. And by the way, Ken Miller will be our keynote. Ooh, yes. at tell, the us, conference. tell us more about Ken Miller for those of, uh, you know, our, our viewers and our listeners that might not be familiar with Ken. Ken has a beautiful story and um, gosh, I don't even know where to start. He has an incredible history as a Dartmouth grad, a three-time convicted felon. And just the contradiction there, he talks about, you can't make assumptions about people based on their past lives and you can learn in your life, there's so many ways to learn about how to be a part of this world. So he is a fundraising consultant. He's on the board of AFP Global. I believe he's one of the co-founders of the African American Development um, Associ his Association, but, or Development Officers, African American yes. Development Officers, AADO, an incredible organization. He's just, he's doing good in the world and he's ensuring there's representation in the fundraising sector right. using his platform to really do that. So we can't wait to have him there. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, if you don't have this book, you should absolutely get it. But I was just sharing, you know, collecting courage, really talking about people of color in the fundraising uh, world, in the sector, what that looks like. Um, and so it's really great. Um, well, Julia, it's it's so much fun. I, I keep looking at our clock here, but I want to thank both of you. Um, Pearl and Faith from National University Fundraising Academy. Do look into Cultivate, that conference coming up in San Diego. I mean, who doesn't want to be in San Diego in June? Yeah. So June 1, full day conference. And uh, use that code community to take yeah. advantage of the promo. So thank you both for joining us. Thanks for having us. And it's fundraising-academy slash cultivate. Perfect. <laughs> thank you so much for having us, Jarrett and Julia. Thanks, Julia. Bye, Julia. Bye. Thanks, ladies.
Wow. As you can tell, there's just so much going on here and so much also to look forward to, right? Like there's not often at a conference that we can say, Hey, join us in another country. But before you join us in that country, join us in California. Um, So it's just, there's a lot going on. And like I said, honestly, I still feel like I'm riding high from last year's icon in Las Vegas. And so just to keep this momentum going, I'm also really excited, Julia, because we will have so many amazing, passionate speakers and guests coming on the show. Uh, That is a big piece. Yeah, that is a big piece of my presence here is, you know, what, what does that representation look like? What are the topics? You know, what are these things that we need to be talking about and bringing to the nonprofit show for all of our viewers across the globe? So um, there's a lot, a lot to discuss. I love it. Well, Jarrett, thank you so much for being in New Orleans. You have done a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been wonderful. Again, AFP Icon 2023, Le Bon Temps. It's been amazing, amazing. I'm Julia Patrick. She's Jarrett Ransom. And we are so thrilled that you have been with us for another episode of The Nonprofit Show. We want to thank all of our sponsors, Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, who just joined us, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the people who are with us day in and day out, and they help support our sector. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And a big thank you to Jarrett Ransom, the nonprofit nerd. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jarrett. It's been, thank you. It's thank been you. It's a, been a lot of fun. It has. It's been a lot of fun. As we end every episode of the nonprofit show, we want to remind ourselves, our viewers, our listeners to stay well so you can do well. Thank you, Jarrett. Mwah.